Hybrid safety, it's very important. When it comes to safety, a single second is all it takes for something to go horribly wrong. Hybrid vehicles are high voltage systems. So make sure you watch all four of the safety videos. The first one you're in right now, hybrid safety identification. Now that means we're going to identify the high voltage circuits and show you how to do that. Number two is hybrid manual disconnect switch and show you how to do that on different vehicles. Number three is safety gloves and equipment. How do you select the correct equipment? Four is going to be fault detection and interlock systems. Here's a safety note for when the internal combustion engine may start up. If the ready light is on, the internal combustion engine can start, and that would be to charge the high voltage battery pack, and it can do this with the vehicle in park. Anytime the vehicle is in motion, we can start the internal combustion engine. On some vehicles, like full hybrids, they're going to use a three phase high voltage electric compressor for the AC. So they can start up that compressor at any time. With the air conditioning selected, we can start the internal combustion engine up to cool the high voltage battery pack. One of the very important functions, the responsibilities of the high voltage hybrid computer is to keep that battery pack cool. So it'll start the air conditioning up just to cool that. Now the engine can start to empty just the bladder for the EVAP system. Now the EVAP system will be discussed later, but it's an expandable bladder in the fuel tank. And if the computer, the PCM, the OBD2 computer, decides that it's time to empty the EVAP system because of fuel tank pressure, the engine can start to empty that bladder. So you have to be cautious. The internal combustion engine can start up without any warning to you. So high voltage safety is very important. You're going to want to identify the high voltage circuits, understand and apply safety precautions. You're going to be in charge of selecting proper test equipment. So you want to understand the effects of current on the human body. Here's some hybrid voltage examples. And the top one is a Honda at 144 volts. The Ford Escape down at the bottom, it's 330 volts with everything in between. Yes, it's high voltage. Why do we have such high voltage on a hybrid? Higher voltage produces more power. The battery packs are rated, rated right around 200 amps max. So the only way we're going to get more power is to increase the voltage. To quote an automotive reviewer on the RX 400H, the Lexus story is that the new hybrid gets 13 miles better per gallon than the standard V6. And it also has 38 more horsepower. And they got that through high voltage. Ford goes to over 40 miles per hour before starting the internal combustion engine with their extra voltage. So you got to be cautious at all levels. No pushing or pulling this vehicle with the drive wheels on the ground. High voltage output can result while moving the vehicle with the wheels around the ground. Now, the motor generator is going to turn and it's going to produce high voltage. So no pushing or pulling this vehicle when the drive wheels are on the ground. There's an SAEJ1673 standard. And it provides a standard to the manufacturers of these hybrid vehicles. And it states... Harnesses containing high voltage shall be identified with permanent orange harness covering materials. Technicians should obtain a copy of this J1673, and of course you should read it. That means that we have a color code, and it's orange. Hybrid vehicles may not be as dangerous to work on as they first seem. If the key is off and out of the vehicle, the hybrid system is supposed to be powered down. Now, at the bottom, we can see on the left a drawing of the power relays, and on the right, we can see an actual photograph of a Prius power relay there. And these are supposed to be open, not flowing current, if the key is off and out of the vehicle. Could they short, and you can see there's two of them there, could they both short and cause a dangerous situation for a technician? Yes. What are the odds? I don't know, but I'm not going to take chances. 
Now, the battery isn't going to shock you unless you go poking around the high voltage, that orange battery connection with your bare hands or uninsulated tools. Down there at the bottom, we're showing those relays. Even if you have the manual disconnect switch out on the left side of those relays, you're going to see full battery pack voltage. Always treat the high voltage, hybrid battery pack and electrical components with caution. Now there's an exception to this orange rule. Mild 42 volt systems sometimes have blue covers. Some 42 volt systems use blue covers and some use orange. So when we look at this photograph we can see someone chose to use blue and here we see someone chose to use orange. So be cautious. Some of them may be blue, but that's high voltage and it can hurt you. So identifying high voltage systems, anytime you're in the engine compartment, you're underneath the vehicle, you're in the luggage compartment in the rear or underneath the seats on some GM trucks, orange wires and covers mean high voltage. Here we're just showing you a collage of photographs on the top left. We're showing you an air compressor with an inverter on top and it has orange coverings. Top right is a battery pack with its cover off and you can see the high voltage connections and wiring are in orange. On the lower left you can see that battery pack disassembled with the orange all over it. And then on the right we see two orange wires there. Then of course we see the danger high voltage sign and in the lower left we see the icon for danger high voltage and that tells us that we're working around high voltage be careful now here are the high voltage power relays that we showed you earlier on the left it's coming from the battery cells on the right it's going to the vehicle systems now those are two power relays when the ready light is off they're supposed to not transfer any of the high voltage high current to the vehicle itself and we talked about that and we'll talk about these relays in the basic technical class so what do they call high voltage well these are standards that the electrical industry uses and DC and AC you can see the two categories there DC is 60 volts and that means we're talking about high voltage in AC 30 to 43 and don't forget we do have AC voltage in hybrid systems and then we have the intermediate and the low designations now milliamps effect on the human body are very important to you you can see that at one milliamp you can contract muscles up to five there pains three to ten and it can't let go is ten to forty that's a very important fact at ten to forty millisecond uh, milliamps you can't let go of that wire so what you're going to have happen is you're going to extend the time the electricity is running to your body and that can cause harm or even death and then in the yellow there you can see that stop breathing and heart problems even up to heart stopping is still under 300 milliamps and you can get burns on your skin at a half an amp there so don't make a station, uh, a fashion statement here. Use rubber soled shoes. Those are the ones you're supposed to be wearing in the shop anyway. Wear cotton clothes and that's what you're supposed to be doing. You can see down in the lower right hand corner, there's a test for a polyester shirt and it caught fire. You want to be that dummy in there? Make sure you wear cotton clothing around this stuff. And of course, no rings, watches, necklaces, or large belt buckles. You can't be too safe. Use procedures to ensure high voltage cannot be reconnected during the servicing process. Now, we're going to show you how to disconnect the battery pack with the manual disconnect switch. And somebody could come along and say, oh, look, it's out. It's sitting there in the trunk. I'm going to plug it back up in for this guy so he won't forget it. And then you think it's isolated. So use precautions, whatever you have to do. Tie it off somewhere so it's tethered and it can't be put in there. Put it in your pocket, which may be a good or bad idea. If you're going to take it home at night, it's a real bad idea. If you're going to lock it up in your toolbox, that's a bad idea because if you don't come back to work, somebody else has to work on this vehicle. But you need to set up a procedure on what to do with that manual disconnect switch. Now, safety cones and tapes 
could be used to surround the vehicle. There are shops that have the procedure. They use four safety cones on the four corners of the vehicle, and they use the safety tape around that. And the shop personnel know that no one but the person working on that vehicle should go in there. Now, these vehicles have high energy in the capacitors. I'm going to show you a photograph of the capacitors in a minute. You can see they're very large. They have a lot of electricity to shock you with. Most manufacturers are going to recommend waiting somewhere between 5 and 15 minutes before working on the vehicle, and that's after the battery has been isolated or disconnected. Now, this is going to give the high-voltage capacitors time to discharge, and there at the bottom you see these large capacitors. Now, they're, they're, they're not, not going to automatically discharge the high energy in the capacitors for the inverters. Now, they do have a active discharge and a passive discharge system on these hybrids. But it doesn't matter. Just wait your 5 to 15 minutes. You can see this chart here is showing us the active discharge in the blue and the open or the unactive, the passive discharge system. And you can see to go from the 300 volts down to 0 volts takes 160 seconds when they don't have an active discharge, a resistor to help discharge those capacitors. Wait your 5 to 15 minutes. Read and follow the safety precautions in the manufacturer's service manual. Don't, don't take shortcuts. Set rules for how your shop handles working on hybrid vehicles and make sure you follow them. Let's talk about the hybrid controller, the control module. It's going to monitor the voltage of the hybrid battery and the relays that information to the other computers on the vehicle. It may automatically restart the internal combustion engine as we said. If the hybrid battery voltage gets low, it's going to send a signal that the IC engine needs to be started to recharge the battery pack. And of course you can use this information diagnostically. A typical symptom of a high voltage battery pack problem could be that the internal combustion engine never shuts down. It pulls up to a stop sign and continues to run. You pull up and put it in park and it continues to run. And what that might be telling a technician diagnostically is that the hybrid control module knows that the high voltage battery pack voltage is low and is trying to charge it back up. It may point you in the direction of your diagnostics. Let's talk about the ready indicator light. Most vehicles have a ready indicator light, and that's to let the driver know when the hybrid system is on. High voltage is active, of course. Make sure the ready light is out. The ignition is off and the key is out and away from the vehicle before you start any service or repair. Removing the key from the vehicle is especially important if the vehicle has a keyless entry system and recognizes the key fob in close proximity to the vehicle, like a smart key on a Prius. So we say that at least 20 feet away will ensure that the computer can't see the key fob. And this is specifically true on Ford. So remove the key and the key fob and take it away. On the top left, you can see that we have a normal key and a key fob. On the lower right there, you can see that we have a smart key, and this is a photograph of the smart key. When you need the key, it's inserted into the smart key fob itself. All right. First step, press the stop button. Always ensure that the ready lamp is out, and then we show you some dashboards and say no matter how they indicate power is up or power is down, make sure the ready lamp is off. Make sure that ready lamp is out. And here we pointing to the, look at the photograph, look at the very top up there by 55 miles an hour, and you can see that arrow's pointing to the ready light. It's on. You wouldn't want to work on this vehicle right now. Here we have a vehicle with a power button. If the indicator is green or red or flashing red, there's a problem with this vehicle that you have to be cautious around. It should be out like it is now before you start working on it. Power relays connect the high voltage battery pack to the high voltage circuit as we showed you in a real photograph before. 
So that's what's turning that ready light on and off. When the power relays are closed, the ready lamp is on. And we're showing there in the lower left-hand corner that indicator light is green there. Now, when the power relays are open, that indicator lamp is off. The power relays are going to be controlled by the 12 volt battery, and that's that normal everyday 12 volt battery that we see on cars today. And in Prius they put it in the back and it's a newer version of batteries that we'll talk about later. This is where those relays get their power from. The power relays close when the key is in the run position, disconnecting that 14 or that 12 volt battery. Sometimes we call it 14 because that's what it is when it's charging. 12 volts when it's not charging, the ice isn't running. So we have different names for it, but you know what we're talking about, the everyday 12 volt battery that we're working on there. If you disconnect that, you're not going to be able to operate these power relays and the ready lamp is going to be off. There's another important step, and that's to look at the dashboard. Here's one example. It's going to help you identify the system malfunctions. Here, we're showing you that you can have a malfunction indicator lamp on, a mill on, and we know what to do with that. That's an engine control. That's an OBD2 error. All right? So here, we're showing you that it's indicating that there's a problem with the 12-volt system. And, of course... We have a brake light, and because we have brake by wire on hybrid vehicles, if you're going to work on the brake and you have a brake warning lamp on, you definitely want to go through the process of disconnecting the high voltage hybrid system from the vehicle to work on the brakes because just like starting the ice, the hybrid controller can command a cycle of the brake system and pinching or hurting or breaking some part of your body. So the high voltage system master warning light is probably the, probably the most important one. Fault detected in high voltage electronics or high voltage battery pack, this light comes on. And this tells you before you do anything, you want to go back there and disconnect manually the battery pack and see if that light goes out. You do not want to be poking around this vehicle with this lamp on. Now, here we have an output control warning, and that's the turtle lamp. It indicates that the output of the hybrid drive is actually limited. So that's telling you there is a problem with the hybrid system. And red coolant warning lamp tells us that the coolant temperature is above 244 degrees Fahrenheit, and the blue tells us it's below 113, telling us there's something wrong with the hybrid cooling or the hybrid cooling system. But we're talking about the normal ice cooling system here, and you can see that the cooling system is a little bit different than we're used to. Hybrids store the coolant for idle stop function, and we'll talk about that in the class. And in the lower right-hand corner, you can see that down there in the red is that storage tank. Over on the left-hand side, you can see an actual photograph of that storage tank. It is like a thermos bottle. It can keep the coolant hot for several hours, so a technician needs to beware. Just because the Prius sitting there has been in that service bay for six hours does not mean that the coolant is cool. Lifting hybrids is very important. The high voltage orange wires run underneath the vehicle. Be careful. Don't put the lifting arms on them or near them. On the one on the left, you see a orange casing enclosing the wires. So we have noticed that on some hybrid vehicles, that orange casing that you see in that photograph is sometimes white. And then you can see they're just bare underneath this Ford in the center, and on this Chevy truck you can see they're bare. So you have to pay attention when lifting the hybrid vehicles not to get the lifting arms near the high voltage circuits. You know, and first and foremost and last, don't forget, ask your insurance agency about working on hybrid vehicles. What do they want? Do they want the four cones that are surrounding the vehicle to keep everybody but the guy working on them out? 
check with city ordinances to see if there's something special you should be doing. Some shops are going to use the tapes and the cones around the vehicles. They're going to make sure and verify that no one has the ability to activate the ignition or replace the safety switch or activate safety switches. Make a policy. Only the servicing technician can make any changes to the vehicle. Remember, the AC compressor can turn on. The ice can turn on. Any accessory may turn on and have high voltage flowing through its circuits. So make sure that you watch the other three safety videos on this website.